How is it? It's awful. It's terrible. It's the worst thing I've ever eaten. I, I'm not even a fan of kimchi. <laughs> Guys, so we're in a ranch in the middle of nowhere with uh, it's Trey, right? So we've come to secret, undisclosed location where he's uh, retired to, and we're gonna hear his story. So he is a retired football player. Mad. You never know who you're gonna meet, huh? Well, I can see why you want the house right here, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just... the view's pretty nuts. So why did you uh, why did you say yes for him for let me do a trim for you? Yeah. Obviously, I have no idea if I'm good or not. I mean, one, I really don't care. It's just. I'm not one of those guys that flashy or has to look, you know. Sure. Uh, like I'm, I'm pretty simple as you can see. Yeah. Matt. Like the quiet life. Yeah, and you caught me <laughs> in a good mood. In a good <laughs> yeah, usually it's not. Well, you'll, uh, you'll be my first NBA player I've ever, uh, NFL player. Sorry. Now, what does it stand for? NFL? <laughs> not for long. Not for, <laughs> not National for long. National football league, but not National for long. National football yeah. league. Do you want to introduce <sighs> yourself? Who you are? Trey Waynes, if you want me to say anything else, like, yeah, oh. yeah, just, yeah. You know. And how long did you play uh, football for? Uh, shit, I've been playing football for probably over 20 years, uh, professionally, seven. Mm -hmm. And you've just retired, right? Yeah, retired about two weeks ago, officially. I played for Minnesota for five years mm -hmm. and Cincinnati for two. The first one I usually ask is, what has been your greatest adventure you've had in life so far? I mean, for one, you could say, you know, the NFL career, playing in the NFL, experiencing that. Two, being a f parent. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, I hear that one a lot. Yeah. So. How like, many kids have you got? I got three daughters. Oh wow. So it's like. That's a handful, huh? Yeah, and it's, you know that's a challenge, you know, in its own. So I would say that, and then maybe, honestly, just walking away from the game. You know, that was a big thing with a lot of you know of my friends and you know former teammates and you know coaches they were like and like even you know with my agent like they were kind of confused while I was walking away I guess in my prime I guess mm -hmm. you know because I'm fairly young still and you 29 know, man you're yeah young. so you know I could easily keep playing if I wanted to so what was the reason that you walked away you know I've always had like a set number like I always wanted to play eight uh, eight years just because you know that's enough to make you know enough money to be financially stable and take care of my family did you feel like you hit that goal yeah I hit it um, you know I hit it a while ago because fortunately I was blessed to be drafted first round so I was what's first round for everyone watching this I don't know yeah there's multiple rounds in the NFL draft and okay. obviously you know the higher you go the more you get paid and stuff like that but sure. You know, I was fortunate enough to go first round and, you know, my best friend shortly after. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was, I had a good, you know, group of people around me that, you know, just helped me, you know, stay the course and like financially, I, you know, made smart decisions. And mm -hmm. when I had my first daughter, I guess, um, mm -hmm. you know, I missed a lot just because of, you know, traveling and playing and stuff like sure. that and being at work all the time. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize how much you know, time we put into it. It's so your life, right? Yeah, so I mean, that was that was hard, being away and like missing a lot of her stuff uh, from her earlier years. And, and, you know, I told my wife, I was like, I didn't want to have any more, so I was done just because, you know, I wanted to be there for, you know, a lot of the stuff they were, you know, doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, you know, another reason. But, you know, also like, I was never one, think about it as like, you know, football's the end all be all, like, you know, providing for your family. Yeah, it was, just, it was just something, you know, I was able to do and, you know, live out a childhood dream. And when you play the game for, you know, as long as most of us do, mm -hmm. injuries happen. And yeah, I had multiple concussions. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, when I came to Cincy, you know, the injury bug just kind of hit me pretty hard. I, I tore my pec the first year, my pectoral muscle. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, I think there was like an inch hanging off of it and an inch hanging off well hanging like keeping it together oh wow. yeah so like i missed the whole season because of that you and still then, get paid if you miss the season or not yeah i mean you're contracted right yeah but i mean there's a lot of weird situations but yeah 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 fortunately i was i still got paid because i got injured at work but so what would you say your uh, greatest challenge you faced in life is Raising three girls. <laughs> raising three girls, yeah. Um, That's a challenge and an adventure. Yeah. Right? Uh, 
So I would say navigating playing at a professional level, just because, you know, I say normal very loosely because somebody yeah, yeah. who's not necessarily in the spotlight 24 seven, mm -hmm. you know, has millions of people like watching games and stuff like that. I would say just learning how to navigate being yourself at this Monster kind of, of yeah, just because despite what you do, you're always under a microscope. And sure. Is that why you moved out here to be less under a microscope? Yeah, I mean, I've never, I've never been somebody who liked attention. Sure. And you just know, just football was your career, and that's yeah, it, it was my job. It. Yeah, and you know, I, I love the game, but you know, the one thing I didn't like about it was you know the realities that came with it. Sure. And you know, just how did you overcome those realities? Like I said, I say to myself, I have a good friend group, you know, my family down, but mm -hmm. you know, you just got to learn how to block a lot of that out because, you know, for example, like that's like you, let's say, you know, you cut somebody's hair, somebody watches you cut hair, and they just, you know, you do one little thing wrong and they're calling for oh, your yeah, job. Oh, yeah, I and, get it all the time, man. You know, that kind of stuff. And then, like, you know, it's things that you can't control sometimes, like, what if, you know, let's say you worked at a barber shop and you know, the owner came in and said, oh, we're trading you to, you know, Utah for a f***ing cheeseburger. And you can't do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, You know, so it's just, I would say, a lot of the outside world doesn't really see. Like, they see it, but they don't really understand it. They don't know, they don't know what happens yeah, when they close Yeah, they don't know. But it's like, like I said, just trying to navigate the business side of the NFL itself on top of all the expectations that, you know, millions of people that you've never even met or know about have for you. Yeah. And it's just... You know, it just it all adds up. But like I said, just learning how to navigate that. We're coming up to the uh, the end of your your trip, and uh, it's my favorite question I like to ask everyone that allows me to cut their hair. If you had a uh, 15 year old version of yourself in front of you, what advice would you give that young man? I would say just be more open to other ventures outside of sports. Well, I mean, it also just depends on how, you know, grow, you grow up and- Of course, yeah. You know, I, both you, my parents- You in particular. Yeah, like, so both my parents, they were, you know, guidance counselors in the school system and, mm -hmm. you know, I was always raised to, you know, school first and all that stuff and take it serious. Mm -hmm. But, you know, growing up, uh, where, where we grew up, you know, sports was the thing. You know, we didn't really have any, you know, professional athletes, you know, before me that, you know, we were personally able to see and sure. show us the way and stuff like that. So we were kind of just figuring it out on our own. But, you know, I would, like I said, I would say just be more open to, you know, things outside of sports because, you know, after meeting, you know, a lot of people, you know, through sports and, yeah. you know, in the outside world, it's like the people I know that are more successful than a lot of my friends that are professional athletes, mm -hmm never touch the football or never play sports or you know never did something like that you know a lot of them are entrepreneurs and stuff like that so i would say just be more open and explore more business options because not so it's like there's more money out there outside of athletics and you know a lot of kids that's all they know that's all they see sports, yeah so it's like you know there's other options other there are, than yeah, just being a superstar there are other options outside of you know love that man being a superstar and you know explore those cool have Appreciate it, man. Fresh, no, I, huh? Yeah, I like it. I mean, <laughs> I want to show you the back. Yeah, I'm cool with it, man. I mean, like I said, I'm pretty simple. You know, as long as she likes it, I yeah. like it. I don't care. But as long as the missus checks, that's that's good. Well, thank right. you for trusting me, man. Yep. And thank you for uh, telling me your story. Thank you again, brother. No, thank you. Can you say your name one more time so everyone knows? Yep. Uh, I'm Trey Waynes, and you know, thanks for hooking me up. <laughs> My pleasure, man. <laughs> cool. Awesome, bro. Right guys, I need to go back to the hotel to get a spare battery, but we have done our haircuts for Montana, three of them, and an NFL star. It's time to enjoy the hot springs. Just before I leave, look how sick this view is. If it looks good, take a picture. Right guys, so we're back at the hot springs. I gave myself a haircut as well. I'm not sure how straight it is, but I have got a wicked tan line. Oh my God, look at that. Right, we are changed. I'm now looking for the exit. So I will, uh, I'll give it to them. The springs are pretty hot. Right guys, my face is peeling to shit. It's time for dinner. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready. It's the bim bim, I can't, I'm not gonna say it. It's okay, it's called the sizzling bibimbap. It's a hot stone bowl and it has rice in it. So it's the most popular dish, right? It's, it is the most popular dish. Um, what comes with more meat? Um, the galbi is gonna come with more meat. If I was having the galbi. I feel like you'd have seasoned rice, right? I would have seasoned rice. Let's do seasoned rice. Yeah. Yeah, basically. 
Oh, it's a nice bike. Yeah. Dumplings, seven out of ten. Actually, f seven and a half. Very tasty, and the sauce is good as well. Now you have a cucumber salad. It's like an umami sweet flavor, like a very light vinaigrette. It's got kimchi, cucumber salad, and beef short ribs. It's a full plate. I know my sister would be going mad for this. And this is, a, I think this is the same cucumber salad. So we have a rib here. I'm going with my fingers. Yeah. Mmm. That is some. Get out of my ear. It's a very generous portion size for the price. This was twenty-two dollars. Dumplings were eight. And there's like, there's a decent amount of beef in this. How is it? It's awful. It's terrible. It's the worst thing I've ever eaten. I, I'm not even a fan of kimchi, but I'm liking the kimchi. Good. I, uh, it's good, yeah, it's really, really good. Beef is super tender. It's good, I'm very happy. I'll try one more bit of kimchi. It's got a nice kick to it. Not too spicy. Nice crunch. All the things you're looking for when you're taking a bite of food. Crunchy, spicy, tasty. And anything I can grab for you over here? Can I get this takeaway? Yeah, it's a very large portion. Yeah. Um, and uh, compliments to the chef, it was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back with a box for you. Thank you very much, bro. Yeah, right, guys, it's been an emotional time in Montana, but tomorrow we have got a long 10 hour ride all the way to Washington, Seattle. I'll catch you later. Okay, let's make a boogie. Freeway intro. Do you guys have any like ketchup or anything? I do, I do. Thank you. I can move in a sec. This is my, my landlord's and he has a really hard time getting in. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. How you doing bro? Nice to meet you. Good. Good Ciao. <laughs>